Hi everyone from Medstream. Um, welcome to Cat Lab One at Instituto Dante Pazanese de Cardiologia. My name is Dimitri Siqueira, and I'm joined here today by a wonderful team to share with you a very interesting case of uh, uh, percutaneous treatment of aortic stenosis. And without further ado, I would like to introduce our case. So this is a 77-year-old gentleman, uh, non-frail, independent. Um, he has uh, atrial fibrillation and presented in our hospital with symptoms of heart failure due to aortic stenosis. Surgical risk assessment, you can see the error score 2 is 1.1 and the STS score was estimated as 1.2. Um, here uh, you can see the lab tests, unremarkable, the renal function is normal with, with a GFR of 82. Um, he is in, on sinus rhythm uh, yesterday. And these are the echo findings. You can appreciate here that the uh, LV function is uh, well preserved, ejection fraction is 60%. He has a mild uh, mitral uh, regurgitation and a severe aortic stenosis. The mean gradient is uh, 67 and the aortic valve area was estimated as 0.7 square centimeters. This patient uh, underwent a CT evaluation and you can see here that uh, the aortic valve is very calcified. Um, it seems to be a bicuspid. We will see uh, some images uh, in, in the next slides. But in fact, um, this patient has an, uh, diameters of 22 millimeters per 25.5. The annular area was 420. And the diameter of uh, Valsalva sinus are all, all above uh, 30 millimeters. He has no disease on the ascending aorta. It's not dilated. And here you can see the coronary distance to the annulus, uh, all above 12 in the, the left and the right. And here you can see some images uh, taken from the, the aortic valve. It seems to, to be a rough between uh, the right and the left coronary cusp. Uh, you can see that the valve is very calcified. This is the projection that we estimated from, from Trimension. We're gonna use during valve implantation Aerial 6, caudal uh, 8. And here you can uh, appreciate the 3D reconstruction of the iliac and femoral vessels. This patient has no um, lesions. The diameters are, are good, but uh, he has a lot of tortuosity on the, the iliac uh, vessels. So this is one of the the main challenges for uh, this case. Uh, we have done some measurements and, and uh, we, we simulate the implantation of uh, two different sizes of a balloon expandable valve. Uh, we use the, the circle method uh, to do this. And you can appreciate here that uh, the, uh, 23 um, in, on the top and uh, 24.5 uh, below. So in summary, 77-year-old uh, male with uh, severe and symptomatic aortic stenosis, non-frail, low surgical risk, and anatomical challenges for TAVR, uh, bicuspid aortic valve, and arterial access tortuosities. So after hard team discussion, um, we decided for, for TAVI, and our plan here is to do the case uh, under uh, conscious sedation uh, with um, uh, echo uh, TTE uh, monitoring. We're gonna perform uh, valve implantation use, uh, using uh, LVY pacing. We're gonna use the left axis 
and due to the tortuosity, um, we we discussed and um, we decided to to perform this case uh, using just one uh, arterial access, um, and we're gonna predilate the valve and implant a balloon expandable THV my valve from Mario Life Science. So uh, before we, we move on, uh, maybe we can review some echo images. Please, Chito. Uh, well, first of all, in this uh, first picture here, we can see the right ventricle above the left ventricle, the left atrial and aortic valve. We see that the normal function of the right and left ventricle and a lot of calcification and uh, thickening of the leaflets of the aortic valve. Uh, we see a mild increase in the volume of the left atrial with 39 millimeters per meter square, and all other measures are uh, normal. As you can do a short axis in the aortic valve, we see the uh, bicuspid aortic valve with the fusion of the right and left cusps with a lot of calcification. Analyzing the contraction in the four, two, and three chambers, we see no alteration on that. Even in the boot slice analysis, we see from the apex to the uh, basal segments without any alteration here. Left ventricle uh, ejection fraction is uh, normal too, 60% of that. Three dimensional right ventricle ejection fraction normal too, with 53% and fact two, 43%. Analyzing the flow, we see in the mitral mitro <coughs> valve regurge, it's a mild regurge. We know gradients. Beyond that, uh, we see the tricuspid valve with a mild to moderate regurge and a pulmonary artery systolic pressure around 36 millimeters mercury. And finally, in the aortic valve, a lot of calcification. We, we can see any important calcification in the left ventricle alpha track. We see a mild moderate regurge at this site with the max gradient about above 80 millimeters. Mercury, a mean gradient above 60 millimeters uh, mercury, max velocity around 4.7 meters per second, area estimating 0.7 centimeters squares, and index that for the burst surface area, 0.45 centimeters square meters square. So, Alberto, we decided to use the left um, femoral arterial axis for both the delivery system and for the second axis just to perform uh, the, the angio angiograms required for valve implantation. So uh, the sequence uh, that we, we performed here was, first, uh, we got the uh, left uh, femoral access uh, using ultrasound guided puncture. Yeah. And then um, you can appreciate on the fluoroscopy the tortuosity of the the left uh, femoral and iliac vessels. This is the first angel that we got just to, to demonstrate that we puncture at the right side at the common femoral uh, artery. And then we already placed uh, one proglide uh, just for uh, uh, hemostasis at the end of the procedure. And then after that, we got the second axis here, just one to two centimeters below the first uh, puncture. And we think that this secondary axis uh, has some advantages uh, because of the tortuosity of the vessel. So we can use this axis to aid uh, the large bore sheet placement. Mm using a body wire technique. So that's what we did. Um, we placed a long six French sheet on the secondary axis uh, with a pigtail and inside the pigtail, a uh, stiff wire, a Lunderquist. And then we are able to place the large bore uh, sheet, the 14 French uh, Python, without any uh, difficulty. And Dimitri, in your opinion, do you think the radial artery as a secondary access will be not able to perform this case? Well, Roberto, in fact, um, 
radio is our um, default uh, secondary access during TAVI procedures because um, there are some evidence that uh, radio access reduce uh, vascular complications during TAVI. But in this case, um, I think it's going to be a little bit difficult, uh, cumbersome, to treat any potential complication that may occur uh, using the, the left uh, uh, femoral artery. Yeah, that's a great explanation. But thinking about complications, why not using the contralateral side? In practice, most operators uh, prefer to use the contralateral femoral artery for the secondary access. But in this case, uh, we think that it would be difficult to cross over to the right, uh, to, to cross over to the left from the right of femoral artery due to tortuosity. So we are, we are ready here to, to cross the valve. We're gonna use uh, Amplat's left one diagnostic catheter and a regular uh, straight uh, wire. Sometimes another uh, catheter is needed, but it went easy, right? Yeah. Okay, so we already crossed the aortic valve with a straight tip um, guide wire. And then Alberto is gonna insert the amplex catheter in the, into the left ventricular cavity. And then we are gonna exchange um, the straight uh, tip wire for a uh, long uh, J-tip regular wire. I'm gonna do some... Do you think so, this step to place the pigtail catheter in the interior of the left ventricle is an important step before putting the stiff wire? Yeah, we, we're still doing that. Um, we know that we can use the amplex left to to place the extra stiff wire, the, the, the Confida or the yeah. Safari, but we still replace the the, uh, the implant catheter for the pigtail just to get uh, some hemodynamics and to help us to place the, the stiff wire. And Dimitri, when talking about di bicusp intervention, tower in a bicusp intervention, what are the current evidence to support that? Well, Alberto, we have no uh, randomized data yet, but some uh, registry, big registry, and some observational studies uh, shown uh, encouraging results um, with good clinical outcomes, low rate of uh, paravalvular leak. So you can see here that there is a minimal waste, and this is a 23 balloon. So uh, we think that the, the 23 um, THV is going to do the work, right? Yeah. So we can see that the predilation helps with uh, useful information to yeah. decide what to do when you have doubt. We can see this degree mm -hmm. PVL with the selected balloon. Mm -hmm. We can estimate the risk of coronary obstruction. And we also can see the behavior of the THV in the aortic valve turn on pet puffing that minimize the incidence of PVL. The frame is made by Nico, Cobalt and Alloy that gives a high radial straight and a good radio opacity. It goes on a 14 frame expandable shift called Python and has the possibility to retrieve the crimped valve in case of inability to cross the annulus. So we have 53% of open cells regions, so as a, a good coronary access. And as you can see, the valve has a pattern in the fluoroscopy. As you can see there, the, we have a first dense band, a second light band, and a second dense band. Usually, we place the second dense band in the base of the peak day catheter on the non-coronary cusp, and it gives us uh, positioning of 30% or 25% ventricular. What do you think are the advantages and disadvantages of um, this type of valve as compared to other balloon expandable systems? Yeah, that's a great question. We, I think a good 
points to highlight is the the <clears throat> intermediate size that we have. We have done a more tailored approach for the patient. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he, it is crimped directly in the balloon, it's a good feature. And we can retrieve the valve in case okay. of inability to cross any structure or the annulus. And the system, the navigator, is really flexible. Mm -hmm. But in other hands, we lose in pushability. Okay. Sometimes it's a bit harder to cross some mm -hmm. structures. And, and other um, disadvantage, we need time because we don't have any mid to long-term data uh, yeah. on this valve, right? Yeah, we have uh, long-term data. We, we need uh, long-term data. We see a bigger uh, regurgitation in your position. Maybe it's moderate to severe here. Uh, we measure the, the, the gradient after the expansion. We see the maxim, maximum gradient drops just to 40 millimeters mercury. Uh, we see an increase in the mitral regurgitation too. Maybe it's due to the elevation of the left ventricle pressure inside. Mm. So it's nearly moderate mitral regurgitation. And tricuspid regurgitation just follows the same uh, feeling that we have now a moderate tricuspid regurgitation with a small increase in the aortic pressure in the pulmonary artery. Around 36 plus 5, it's something around 41 millimeters mercury. No precardial effusion, and we don't have any alteration of the contraction. So it's important to see the orientation of the THV. As you can see here, we have the skirt in the distal part and the open cells region in the proximal part. It means it, it is aortic position. Okay. Another important point is to check the volume in the in the flator. We have to see if it is nominal or we have more CCs. Yeah. 18 so, uh, ml. So as we are dealing with a aortic, we have to put with the logo facing upwards. Okay. And then we can go ahead. So I'll try to cross the, the valve, okay? Okay. Okay. Can you yeah, pull it's it? in a good position, right? <clears throat> Maybe you should deflect again here. Let's perform an angel to see the position, if, if okay. it's okay. Angel. Well, I think it's in a good position. Yeah, I think so. Okay. We're quite on the, on the light band to position a little bit higher. I think yeah. it's a good position. So let's do it. Yeah, let's go. Pacemaker on, 120. Okay, 200. Go. Injata? Yeah, that's a good position. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. And pacemaker off. Okay. So let's check the echo, Chito. Yeah. Oh, first of all, uh, we can see here the four, two, and three chamber without any uh, contraction anomaly. No precardial fusion. Uh, we see again a mild mitral regurg. Now we're going to analyze the aortic valve. We can measure here. Uh, the gradients beyond that, just A, the max gradient, and mean gradient about 3.6. So, any part of ovular leak? So, what do you think, Chito? I think we have a, a small one just in the inferior face of that, proximal to the in anterior mitral uh, leaflet. The diastolic pressure, the aortic diastolic pressure is 73. So, from the hemodynamic standpoint, it's a very nice result. Mm -hmm. Let's do an angel. Let's go. Coloca 2020, por favor. Well, I think it's a good result. Let's, yeah, let's I think say so. mild paravalvular leak, and the valve is uh, well expanded. Yeah, considering the amount of calcium that yeah. we have before and the type of uh, aortic stenosis, the bicuspid yeah. one, we have a, a really good result. I think we are done here. And we can see that the THV also is touching the similar tubular junction, right? Yeah. 
and I think it's it's gonna be uh, difficult to expand this valve more because of the rafe. Yeah, that we can retract here. And a tight the very close. As you said before, we are uh, using one proglide routinely he here in at Dante. India. Yeah. In As you can and see, we have, we have no experience. bleeding. Yeah. That's the only one. I think that we can um, pull this wire yeah, here. Yeah, go ahead. Because we have access um, from if the need. secondary access. Yeah. And then we can do some angel just. Yeah, we have no complications. Yeah. Really torches. I can see nothing. We have a good okay. flow. Good flow, and, uh, no, no extrusion, no stenosis. I think that we are done. Yeah. So uh, we thank you uh, for the opportunity again to participate uh, during this uh, live streams, uh, uh, med stream transmission. Uh, it was a great honor for us to, to participate and we hope to see you again in the the next future so thank you so much thank see you, you everyone.